it's your boy Link, man, and I'm back here with another reaction video. It's live right now. I'm about to react to the Idaho college student murders. Now, with this case right here, um, a few of y'all hit me to do this, you feel me? Because y'all know me for doing, like, the forensic file reactions or, like, the, the murder, like, case reactions and stuff where we figure out what happened together, you feel me? And a lot of y'all sent me this because this just happened recently, you know what I mean? And a lot of y'all was like, Lang, bro, we want your opinion, you know what I mean? And this case is one of them cases where you're going to be like, like, what? You feel me? Even by the title, this sounds crazy. Like, like why? Like, bro, what? You know what I mean? So we about to figure out what even happened. You know what I mean? If you haven't seen, like, my, like, forensic file videos or, like, my, like, murder case, like, videos, you know what I mean? Bro, go check them out. Like, I got a whole playlist, you feel me, of, like, the reactions that I've done on like cases and all that stuff you know what i mean so go check those out and bro check out my music reactions too you know what i mean and i do story times i do all that on this channel like i do you know what i mean for the people that are new over here you know what i mean but um with this video right here like i said bro by the title this sounds even, this, this, this sounds crazy you know like for real like you know what i mean so we about to see what even happened and Let's get into it. Let's go. Hey you, and welcome. My name's Mike. And in this whole video, uh, what we are going to do is look at a case that is extremely terrifying. It's still ongoing. And it happened in the city of Moscow, Idaho on the 13th of November, 2022. Exactly one month ago as I'm posting this video. And it's extremely frightening because it's like something, you know, straight out of a horror movie, a slasher movie and then what's even more frightening is that as far as you know we know uh there are no clues no evidence and no suspects wow. so yeah um strap yourselves in as i said this is ongoing so i'll take you through it all to date and we will look at some speculation and rumors gotta put the emphasis on speculations and rumors by the way folks because you know if you read the message boards around this case those trains are wild. Everything about this one is wild. So, let's give it a go. So let's uh, get into the background of the area before we get into the events themselves. And that is the city of Moscow, Northern Idaho, right along the border with the state of Washington. It's just south of uh, Coeur d'Alene, which is, you know, a place we've been to for a story before. And Moscow is, is quite a safe, you know, it's a college town and it's very safe. The last murder to occur there occurred in 2015. So seven years ago. I ain't never been to Idaho, you feel me? But shout out, shout out to Idaho, you feel me? Like, and the people that watch me from, because I know I got people watching me from everywhere. So if you one of my viewers, if you one of the viewers from Idaho that watched me, shout out to y'all, you feel me? But... Let's get back into because that this is like bro just said like how like that's that's not even a town for where that you know where that stuff be happening so like let's get into it bro this is crazy let's go and then this story happened moscow is known as the heart of the arts due to the various festivals that take place there throughout the year no doubt championed also by the university of idaho situated on the west side of town the population of Moscow is rather small, only 25,000 people. Those fine folk are joined by 10,000 students who attend the University of Idaho, the largest university in the state, making Moscow a college town, home of the Vandals. And also home to four students who were attending the University of Idaho in November 2022. Madison Mogan, Kaylee Goncalves, Ethan Chapin, and Zana Kernodal. Madison, Maddie Mogan, was 21 years of age, from Coeur d'Alene. She was born in May 2001 in Eugene, Oregon, growing up in Idaho. She was known as very funny, a hard worker, and was excited to be attending the University of Idaho. There she would make the Dean's List, which is, you know, getting academically recognized by the big dogs, she would make the dean's list every semester. 
She had been dating a fellow student named Jake for almost a year as 2022 closed out, and she was excited to be soon graduating with her degree in marketing. Kaylee Goncalves was also 21 years of age from Rathdrum, Idaho, really again part of the greater Coeur d'Alene area. She was born in Concord, California, the middle of five children. Much like Madison, her family moved to Idaho when she was still quite quite young, and it was actually in middle school that her and Madison began a lifelong friendship. They were inseparable even as they both transitioned to university life, going to the same university together and living in the same house. She was athletic, she was social, and she loved adventure. She was studying to become an elementary school teacher. Mm. Ethan Chapin was 20 years of age, of Conway, Washington. Ethan was in fact a triplet, uh, two boys and a girl, and he was very close with his with his siblings. They would play basketball together, soccer, they would run uh, cross country, and in fact, all three of them would go to the University of Idaho. Ethan himself was majoring in recreation, sport, and tourism management, and he was in a relationship with, finally, Zana Kernodal. Zana was 20 years of age, of Post Falls, Idaho. Born and raised in that area, she was a talented gymnast as a child, and later became a talented volleyball, track, and soccer player. She was dearly beloved, and majoring in marketing at the University of Idaho, and was a member of the Pi Beta Phi sorority with Maddie, Madison. And in fact, they worked together part-time at a local Greek restaurant. And so that's how they all kind of came to know uh, each other. Maddie and Kaylee, they were you know, best friends since childhood. Uh, Zana and Maddie, they were in the same sorority together and they worked together. And Zana and Ethan were in a relationship. As you can see, all four victims, they came from roughly the same kind of general area, and they all had a pretty kind of similar background. And all four were murdered in the same house in the early morning hours of November the 13th, 2022. Maddie, Kaylee, and Zana all lived together at 1122 King Road, located on the hilly, southwesterly side of Moscow. It was a large house, three stories, six bed, three bath. Now, one thing that is super important to know about the house they were living in is that um, it was on a hill, as you can see. So you can enter from the front door, which is on the first floor, the ground floor, or you can enter from a sliding door on the second floor at the back of the house. So Maddie, Kaylee, and Zana lived together along with two other students, Dylan and Bethany. It's believed a sixth uh, student had also lived there along with those five. Their, their name was still on the lease, but by November 13th, they had, uh, they had already moved out. So on November 13th, there was those five people, Zana, Kaylee, Maddie, Bethany, and Dylan, along with Ethan, who, as Zana's boyfriend, you know, presumably he would stay over often enough. There was also the dog Murphy in the house too. Bethany and Dylan, their bedroom was on the first floor, then Ethan and Zana on the second floor, and then Maddie and Kaylee on the third floor. Zana, Ethan, Maddie, and Kaylee were all murdered in that house on the 13th of November. Uh, Bethany and Dylan, who were asleep on the first floor, said they did not hear a thing. So now let's get into what we know about the event. Wait a second, bro. How did you not hear nothing? Like, bro, you can't hear gunshots, bro? Like, I don't care who you are, bro. You're going to hear gunshots. Like, you feel me? Like, that don't, that don't even sound right. And it's crazy because, like bro said, like, it looks like none of them were troublemakers. Like, none of that. Like, you know what I mean? So, but that's just weird how, like, you live in the same house and, like, Everybody else gets slaughtered and you're downstairs and you don't hear like like that. That's you know what I mean. Of that day and that weekend. Wouldn't it be better if a leather holster could lock? With limited carry options, responsible gun owners. On Saturday, the twelfth of November, the victims weren't all hanging around together that evening, but. 
This picture was taken that day. It's kind of eerie, actually, because it shows everyone all together. Posted by Kaylee, the caption reads, One lucky girl to be surrounded by these people every day. Heart. The night of, Ethan and Zana were at a fraternity party just a couple of minutes away, arriving there at approximately 8 p.m. In the meantime, at around 10 p.m., Kaylee and Maddie were picked up from their home and went to the Corner Club, a sports bar in downtown Moscow. So the night went on, all we're having, you know, a grand old time. Apparently never, uh, we haven't heard anything bad that happened. Now, by 1 a.m., uh, Bethany and Dylan, the two other roommates, they had returned home to that house on King Road. They themselves had been out that night separately, not together. But by 1 a.m., they were home. Ethan and Zana were home then by 1.45 a.m. Kaylee and Maddie left the corner club at 1.30 a.m. and were then seen on a Twitch live stream, uh, of all things if you can believe that, by a grub truck parked a couple of minutes away. They regularly live streamed uh, their business, I guess, and both Kaylee and Maddie could be seen. reasons right namely the one being it's the last time any of them were seen on camera alive mm. also there's uh this kind of strange guy on it uh this guy in the hoodie a lot has been made about him too namely because of how he acts especially when you consider what happened just a couple of hours later weird <laughs> He's dressed, covering himself up. It appeared he had been uh, walking with them, but then he's just standing there not talking to anyone. It looks like he's staring at Kaylee and Maddie. And then he walks right up and stands beside him. So did they know him? And if they did, why did they just ignore him? Was he some kind of weirdo? What's the deal? I mean, probably it's just the usual kind of shit uh, women have to put up with drunk guys and that kind of stuff. But again, when you factor in what's about to happen... Ah. Uh... Anyways, the hooded guy was talking to the bearded guy. Apparently, uh, the bearded guy told the police later, this hoodie guy, he seemed nice, and maybe he just wanted to make sure the two girls got home safe. And after Kaylee and Maddie got into a car, one of them had called an Uber or something like that, the bearded guy points and said they're leaving. Allegedly, the hooded guy said, what the fuck? And then he took off, absolutely booking it. I mean, it just is super odd to me that if he was trying to, you know, make sure they got home safe, how they never interacted with him, like, once over the course of the 10 minutes of this footage, whether they knew him or not, from what we can see, it seems they didn't say word one. Now, I do have to be crystal clear here. The police do not uh, consider this guy to be a suspect. And as you can imagine, you know, that footage has been ripped apart by all the internet sleuths online um, examining each and every pixel, I'm sure, at this stage, you know, looking through with different filters, trying to see if there's invisible people in the footage, too. And so then, at 1.55 a.m., Kaylee and Maddie arrived back to that house at 1122 King Road. Between 2.26 a.m. and 2.44 a.m., Kaylee called a fella named Jack, a person she had previously dated, and Jack had been Kaylee's prom date, uh, six times. Then, from 2.44 a.m. to 2.52 a.m., Maddie 
called him three times. Now, Kaylee and Maddie, as I said, you know, they're best friends since middle school and they their bedrooms were right next to each other. And it's actually believed that that night they were in the same bed. They were both in Maddie's bed. So Kaylee, maybe she had a couple of beers or whatever. She was trying to talk to an old boyfriend named Jack, you know, as you can get after a couple of drinks and he wasn't picking up. Then maybe she thought, well, maybe, you know, he's not answering for me. Get Maddie to call him. He didn't pick up for her either. And then at 2.52 a.m., Kaylee called him one last time. And then that was it. Between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., that dark November night, a figure approached that house, slowly slid open the back door, going into that dark and quiet house, armed with an extremely sharp and deadly weapon and savagely murdered Maddie, Kaylee, mm. Ethan, and Zana. Mm. The coroner would say they had likely all been asleep when it happened or when it started because some did have uh, def- I ain't gonna lie, this is why I be telling people, bro, like, lock your lock door, all this shit, because, bro, like, you got weirdos out here that will, bro. And that's what, again, I always tell people, too, I know it may sound, but, bro, everybody gotta start having the guy that I mean, because, like, bro, to protect yourself and just in case, like, somebody want to slide it, like, bro, you know what I mean? Because they, you got, weird, like, you know, it's, man, that's just crazy, because, like, bro, like, they didn't deserve that, like, you know what I mean? None of them did, like, man, bro, that's sad, bro. Offensive wounds all were stabbed to death mm. uh, with a large knife, possibly one quite like this, and there were no signs of sexual assault. And the two roommates, Dylan and Bethany, who had been home before anyone else, who were on the first floor asleep, they never heard a peep while there was absolute carnage going on on the two floors right above them. Wow. Then at around midday on the 13th of November, Bethany and Dylan, they woke up. They found Zana and Ethan on the second floor. They found Kaylee and Maddie on the third floor. Wow. They, they, uh, as you can imagine, they absolutely freaked out. Uh, one fainted of them. One of them even fainted. They called the friends first because, as you can imagine, what's going through your head. And then the police arrived. Don't know how this happened or anything else at this time. Moscow police say they responded to the area around noon Sunday after they had reports that someone was unconscious. When officers arrived, they found the four victims dead. The circumstances at this point are unknown. All we knew for several hours was that there was a homicide investigation here, and that was through a vandal alert, a notification sent by U of I to students around two, asking them to shelter in place. Washington State sent a similar alert to its students a few miles west in Pullman, minus the shelter in place, saying there wasn't a threat to the WSU community. U of I lifted their shelter in place just before 4 p.m., about two hours after their first alert, saying Moscow police didn't believe there to be an active threat to the community. There are a lot of questions that still need to be answered with this happening in a neighborhood that's predominantly made up of U of I students. Investigators on scene say they're in for a long night. Mm. This picture has become pretty well known. Whoa. It's of blood literally leaking out of the house on the second floor. It was, it was graphic. Mm. Alerts went out and the investigation began. The investigation that to date, at least, is still ongoing. Well, there was a lot of blood. It was, yeah, it was, it was a very sad scene. Mabbitt adds that she does not believe the toxicology report on each of the four University of Idaho students will be relevant to the manner or cause of death. Now, Mabbitt has been the county coroner for 16 years in Lataw County. She says in that time, there had been at least two other multiple homicide scenes that she's been involved in. But she says this current homicide investigation is the only one she's been to where there are four people at one scene. It's been said this was a targeted event. Uh, one of the victims or more than one of the victims, you know, was the aim of whoever came into the house and savagely murdered them. Uh, it wasn't random. Kaylee's father would later insinuate in an interview that either Maddie or Kaylee may have been the target, that their injuries were worse, that they were killed differently. The why, we still don't know. And the investigation, you know, that followed has released 
very, very little, uh, and it's been an absolute chock-a-block of mixed messages. First, they said there is a danger to the community. Based on details at the scene, we believe this was an isolated, targeted attack on our victims. We but if it was, the, like, bro, who, who do they have beef with? Like, who? Because they're like... It doesn't even say like you know, cause it it seems like they all grew up like with no no none of that. So it's like who who they have beef with, you know what I mean? Like who? That's 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 my like who, you know what I mean? And it's still weird to me how the roommates didn't hear like no people screaming or none of that's just you know. But I don't. But it's like bro, honestly, what they should have done. You know what I mean? They should have locked their doors, in my opinion. Like, to me, it seems like that door was just, you know what I mean, kept open for whatever reason. I don't know why. But, you know, but it's just, it's, it's, either way it goes, like, this wasn't called for. Like, no, this did not ha need to happen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's sad, bro. But it's like, who do they have beef with? Like, you know what I mean? not have a suspect at this time and that individual is still out there we cannot say that there's no threat to the community and as we have stated please stay vigilant report any suspicious activity and be aware of your surroundings at all times then they would walk that back and say there isn't a danger danger to, to the community they would say they'd all been found in their beds and then they would say they weren't found in their beds but in their bedroom like the messages from the investigation has been very confusing. In the first few days, there were over 600 tips, 90 interviews, a good few. The family members of the victims, God love them, have come out with information too. Saying, you know, this is what the police told them. Now, that's actually become a major factor in this. I think it's frustration on the family's side. Frustration at the slow progress of the investigation because no suspects have been announced no motives have been announced no evidence no leads as to who came in and did this the police have said pretty much absolutely nothing no no messages left behind no squat and that's the most terrifying thing about this you know completely there like a lot of what i'm going to be saying from here on is speculation and theories as i said the police have released almost nothing at all but some serial killer, I think they're a serial killer now, came into a house full of six people in the middle of the night and murdered four of them as they were sleeping with a big ass knife. A knife that looks like it's directly from screen. Now, of course, one of the first things you know, people always ask is why or how did the two who were sleeping, Bethany and Dylan, they were sleeping on the first floor, how did they not hear anything, you know, that night? I mean, there must have been, you know. This is like what I said, bro. That just sounds fishy, bro. Like, I don't care who you are, bro. If you're in a house full of 10 people, somebody come up in there slaughtering people, killing people, people are going to be screaming, yelling, and all the sh... There's no way, like, you ain't hearing that. I don't care how deep of a sleeper you know, bro. You know what I mean? Straight up. That's just me personally. You know what I mean? A lot of y'all getting... A lot of y'all probably going to be, Wayne, bro, you tripping. No, I'm not tripping, bro. Like, bro, I didn't... Bro, I don't, you listen, bro, feel me, I, I didn't been through it a lot in life, bro, I didn't, you know, so I know, like, you can hear that, you know what I mean, straight up, so, I don't know, that's just weird to me, but to me, the most weirdest part, bro, they should have just kept the doors locked, like, why are you leaving doors unlocked for, like, you know what I mean, like, it's, because to me, it seemed like the door was just wide open, he just slid up, like, come on, bro, you gotta lock the door, bro. You know what I mean? Straight up. And to me, I don't know why nobody had, like, web, like a, like a, you know, even, like, bro, you're 21, like, get a gun license. You know what I mean? Like, straight up. Because, bro, I don't know. To me, I, I, I come from a place where, you know what I mean, I didn't seem a lot. You know what I mean? I didn't been through a lot. So it's just like, I, I got to be on point. You know what I mean? Like, but at the same time, bro, they, they, there's no excuse for, you know what I mean, this happening. Like, this should not have happened in the first place. But it's just, like I said, man, it's just sad, like, you know. But, like, that's just weird how the roommates did, on the front did not hear, like, because that's just, 
in my brain, like you, you know what I mean? You're going to hear that. Like, bro, you know, that's just me. Oh, screams or something like some of the, the the victims had defensive defensive wounds so they had tried to fight i mean you can imagine that there was four victims in two beds so one of them attacked you or one could you know what i mean there must have been some kind of some kind of struggles how did that uh, nobody hear nothing well one thing is that it was in the middle of the night maybe they were deep sleepers and uh one fella a guy named ryan he spoke to fox news saying he had actually lived in that house way before and his bedroom had been on the first floor and he would say quote unless his roommate was playing the television loudly on the second floor he typically heard nothing from the second and third floors so i guess they have tick tick floors it's a well-built house by the way the dog murphy the dog he was in the house at the time of the murders but he was kept in a separate room so nothing there uh the dog might you know probably wouldn't have been barking wouldn't even have been aware maybe now, judging from the fact that both Bethany Allen and Dylan survived and they were both on the first floor, we can kind of guess, you know, that the killer entered the house through the, through the sliding door that was on the second floor at the back of the house. Entered there, killed the two on that floor, Zana and Ethan, went upstairs, went after Kaylee and Maddie, and then left without going to the first floor. Although, quick note, uh, a neighbor would also say to the news that he was taking his dog for a walk at 8 a.m. the morning of the 13th of November, and he saw the house, the front door of the house was wide open. So maybe the killer did go down to the first floor and open the door and walk straight out. Again, these are, this is just theories, um, the police have not released anything official. Important to note, though, is that there was no sign of forced entry into the house. And also, at the back of the house, there, it leads into kind of a wooded area. So if you wanted to approach the house in the middle of the night and you didn't want to be seen by passers-by, the back of the house would be the way to go. And that would make sense if either Maddie or Kaylee were the intended target. The killer went straight to the second floor, walked into Ethan and Zana's room by accident, and then went upstairs. And remember, as I said at the top, only 25,000 people live in the city. So whoever did this, if they were local and possibly where, well, then they are still in the eye of the storm. And it probably was, I mean, it, the chances of it being someone local are likely, someone who would know the area. And they're still there. They enjoyed their Thanksgiving dinner just a couple of weeks ago, relishing seeing everything that's going on around them. That's one of the most terrifying things of all. Perhaps the killer was someone who had been to the house previously for one reason or another. A former tenant posted this photo and says all six bedrooms had combination locks. It's believed the students had a lock on their door similar to this. This is a keypad lock. You press the code that was pre-programmed in, push down on the lever handle, open the door, and then close the door behind you. And it should be locked. But this was a party house. Many may have known the combinations. Meet you at the house, let yourself in. They kids do that all the time. Here's a TikTok posted by Kaylee filmed in the house. It could, in fact, give you or the killer a good idea of the layout. But I mean, you could also find the floor plan online easy enough. Now, the police have set up their own website, set up specifically for this case. And on it, they say they have cleared the two surviving roommates, the hoodie guy. Hogwarts legacy. Live the unwritten. Two surviving roommates, the hoodie guy, the driver who took Maddie and Kaylee home that night, Jack, the ex-boyfriend of Kaylee's, who she had been trying to call that very night, and then maybe as it happened, and anyone who had called over the next morning when the roommates called friends before the police. They also cleared the roommate who was still on the lease, but had moved out. And I mean, a few other things happened recently in Moscow that are kind of weird, uh, like just a couple of weeks before in October, and a dog, an Australian shepherd, was found in Moscow skinned from head to toe, Nobody knows who did it, which is like a serial killer thingy to do. Also, questions were raised about if this attack could be linked to uh, two other separate attacks. One was in 1999, where two Washington State University students in the city of Pullman, Washington, were both stabbed as they slept. They survived, but it remains unsolved. Another attack occurred in August of 2021 in Salem, Oregon. A couple were attacked by a masked intruder as they slept, attacked with a knife, one of them was killed, and it also remains unsolved. 
police would come out and say the dog incident or those two other attacks in the middle of the night, people attacking with knives, all unrelated to what happened on King Road. Now, there is the theory that the killer was aiming for one person, uh, that they went into the wrong room, or, you know, somebody heard something and there was some kind of scuffle. And one thing is that Kaylee uh, reportedly mentioned that she had a stalker in the weeks leading up to what happened. Mm. Now, she did have an incident uh, at work. When she was leaving work one day, a guy had tried to follow her to her car. That guy was actually found. The police found him and again he was he was released um you know with nothing there but i mean again they've interviewed a lot of people well over 90 at this point how many times we've seen cases where the police interviewed somebody let them go and it turned out they were the guy but regarding the stalking the police said they don't have any other evidence regarding it but if anybody knows something pass it on and one thing that is really friggin weird you guys is that just a couple hundred feet away in the early hours of November the 13th at 3 a.m., so probably exactly as the time the killer was in the house on King Road doing killing, the police were, were just in the field right next to it. Hey, guys. Mosca PD. Come over here talk to me. Mosca PD. Hey. Is that beer? What's up? Is that beer in your hand? Yeah, I'm 21. You got any ID on you? I don't. Okay. I'll take it back to my apartment if you need. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Huh? No, they just took off. I told them to stop, but I'm not going to push it. Hey, yeah, you got, you, got, you got your ID on you? I don't. Okay. I don't. Yeah. I'm going to grab your info just because you got beer and you're walking around with it. No worries. It's closed. But... Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I live like right there. I'll take it back if you need. No, we're just doing alcohol enforcement and running around with beer across the street. No worries. Sorry about that. You're good. You, are these your boys? No, I don't know them. Okay. Yeah. You guys take it off on me? I didn't use yeah, yeah, we thought you were talking. You all three turned around and I pointed my flashlight. You said, hey, come here. You guys all turned around and walked away. I thought it was just like a fake person. Yeah, like how many how many fake people are out here <laughs> that you've experienced? Or something, so I'm trying to yeah. Okay, that's fair. They were called to a nearby field. Uh, there was some drunk bullshit call. Kids were drinking in a field, something like that. And the house on King Road could be seen in the background of the body cam. Perhaps the killer was inside doing their business during this footage. The killer's car could have been right there. What's even more crazy is that this is literally a couple of hundred yards from the crime scene, and there are a lot of people around at 3 a.m. The tree kids drinking, the cops, this other guy. And then, check this out. You can see four people running away in the distance. Now, probably just kids running from cops. Now, after all, this is a college town, and it's also a Saturday night with lots of events happening that week. No, nah, bro, there's too much weird stuff going on, bro, like, you know what I mean? But, like I said, bro, this is sad, bro, like, whoever, whoever did this, bro, like, I hope, bro, like, you gonna get your day, bro, like, you know what I mean? Because you can't run forever, you feel me? And it's just sad that these families gotta bury their children, like, you know what I mean? Bury their loved ones, because, you know what I mean? It's just sad, bro, but... I'm going to end it right there, though, but y'all let me know because my camera about to die, but y'all let me know how y'all feel about this, you feel me? And that is just sad, bro, you feel me? But, you know what I mean? That's sad, bro. But, like I said, man, if y'all new over here, make sure to check out my other forensic file reactions or my other, like, case, murder case reactions. And check out my music react. Just check out all the reactions on the channel if you haven't already. I got the music reactions. Frenzy fire reactions like this one, funny reactions, story time, all that. You feel me on the channel? I love y'all. Y'all stay safe, and I'm going to get at y'all next time. Already.